What's so special about this work of art? Why was this huge, multi-panel, highly detailed work of art so coveted that it was stolen by both Napoleon and Hitler? I'm at St. Babos Cathedral in beautiful Ghent, Belgium. And today we're here to see the world famous Ghent altarpiece. Officially, it's called the Adoration of the Mystic Lamb. It weighs over a ton and measures 11 feet tall and 15 feet long. But this incredibly detailed masterpiece has three distinctive superlatives. It is the most influential painting ever made. It is the most frequently stolen artwork in the world, making it the most desired art object in history. The painting is a depiction of a Catholic liturgy based on the book of Revelation, including symbols of Christ and shows the coming together of prophets, popes, priests, and martyrs. It features what many believe is the first depiction of God the Father, along with various saints including Mary and John, and these near life-size nudes of Adam and a very pregnant Eve. The detail is amazing, showing things like jewels, floor tiles, historic buildings of the 15th century, even musical instruments. Plus it has as many as 75 different plant and flower species. It is amazing. Almost as soon as it was finished and on display, people were paying to see it. For centuries up until today, for art lovers and history buffs, many make it a destination of pilgrimage, bringing fans from around the world. So to convince you to come to Belgium and see it, here is my list of the eight most amazing reasons to see the Ghent altarpiece. Number one, there is no major work of art that has been bought legitimately more times than the Ghent altarpiece has been stolen. Throughout nearly six centuries, it has been stolen at least seven times. Number two, as paintings go, it is really, really old. How old, you ask? Well, to put it in context, it was finished in the year 1432, which means it was on display a half a century before Columbus sailed for America, and 188 years before the Pilgrims stepped foot on Plymouth Rock in 1620. Number three, artist Jan van Eyck is considered the father of painting with oils. He was so good at it that he started a revolution in the art world. After this piece, just about every artist who was anybody followed his lead, and that include artists like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Rembrandt. Number four. In 1781, the fame of this piece enticed the Emperor of Bohemia to come here just to see the altarpiece. But when he got here, he was so shocked at how repulsive and common-looking Adam and Eve were depicted that he ordered those two panels be removed and stored away. Number five. Most of the characters in this painting are somber-faced and stoic, but way off in the corner is this woman here. She is considered the first person in a pre-modern work of art to be depicted in the act of giggling. Number six. It is the only piece of art to be specifically named in a surrender document as part of a war reparation. After World War I, it was directly mentioned in the Treaty of Versailles, and despite bitter German opposition, it was relinquished and brought back to Belgium, but the Germans were not too happy about it. Number seven. In 1934, these two panels were stolen. Fortunately, one was returned by the thief, but a huge ransom was demanded for the missing panel. And when the Belgian Prime Minister heard about the ransom, he said, One does not do business with gangsters. We're not in America. And by the way, the panel is still missing today. Number eight. Adolf Hitler was so bitter about having to give this piece back after World War I that as soon as he conquered Belgium in 1942, he ordered that it be procured for, quote, safekeeping back in Germany. In reality, he intended it to be the showpiece of his Führer Museum in his hometown of Linz, Austria, where a huge art museum was to be built in Hitler's honor after he conquered Europe. This piece, 
along with tens of thousands of other masterpieces, were systematically and methodically looted from the occupied countries and were stored in places like salt mines, like this one in Altasse, Austria. Just before Hitler committed suicide, he gave the famous Nero Decree, ordering all assets under right control be destroyed. Fortunately, many people worked to defy the Nazis and disarm and remove the explosives aimed at destroying the mine. When the Allies discovered all the looted gold and art masterpieces, it was simply too much to be believed. Here's a picture of Eisenhower and other generals who came to see it for themselves. And here, U.S. servicemen examined the Ghent altar piece just before it was carefully packed up, put on a plane, and returned to Belgium. So I hope you have a great trip. I hope you come and see the Ghent altarpiece and enjoy beautiful Ghent, Belgium. Have a safe trip.